Where did all of the big metric cruisers go? Let's talk about it. Stay tuned. So several years ago, you had a lot of Japanese motorcycle companies that were manufacturing motorcycles that fit in the 1000cc or more big V-twin cruiser territory, or that were similar to a big V-twin cruiser, I'll say that. A lot of these manufacturers were competing for that large luxury touring bike uh, by making many different offerings and many different styles and marketing them to an American market to directly compete with Harley Davidson. As there was no other domestic, real big domestic motorcycle company at the time. As the years have gone on, these bikes pretty much all disappeared from the market, save for a few exceptions like Kawasaki and Suzuki. So what happened? Well, everything here, I guess, is partially my opinion, but what I think happened to the big displacement motorcycles is that in the end of the day, Harley won. And it's a tough pill to swallow for those who are really big fans of metric cruisers. And for those of you guys who are hardcore Harley Davidson guys, I'm sure you guys are like, heck yeah, that's awesome. Told you so. And there may be, like I said, a bit of truth to that. If you think about it, Harley Davidson manufactures a domestically produced American motorcycle for an American consumer who typically buy American products, do American things, and they're just kind of in tune with the culture. The other side of it is Harley Davidson has done an excellent job marketing their product by licensing out everything. Literally, you can buy everything with a Harley Davidson logo on it. Anyhow, through the trick of licensing, they've been able to come up with other streams of income other than just motorcycles that end up to be free advertisement a lot of times. So that really helped their market segment out a lot as well. Um, I'm sure that there is not an American household where someone has not heard of Harley Davidson motorcycles. However, if you start talking about other brands, they may scratch their head and say, hmm, who's Triumph? I think one of the other problems that metric cruisers have had is that a lot of people have gone into metric cruisers as an alternative to a Harley Davidson, really wanting a Harley Davidson out of a Japanese cruiser bike. Obviously, if you do that, you're going to be disappointed because although a lot of these bikes may look similar to their domestically produced Harley Davidson brethren, some of them have nothing to do with a Harley Davidson or have little to no features under the surface that are similar to that of a Harley Davidson. If, and I've said this in another video, if you purchase a Japanese cruiser bike, specifically um, you know, my bike, if you purchase a Kawasaki Vulcan Voyager and you get on it and you expect it to sound like a Harley, you're going to be sorely disappointed. So I think some of it was diehard Harley people getting on these bikes saying, you know what, it's not the same, I don't like it, and then kind of moving on or going back to their old faithful. Um, so part of it is that. I think the other part of it too is with Indian, uh, the arrival of Indian motorcycles on the market in its current iteration as ran by Polaris Industries, it created a domestically produced alternative to Harley Davidson motorcycles. And for some people that was enough, they jumped on it. Um, you saw a lot of that go on in the most current fiasco with Harley Davidson. Um, concerning the the woke movement and all that stuff. A lot of people were ditching their Harley Davidsons and going to Indian. Indian definitely provides a domestically available competitor to the Harley Davidson motorcycle. And if you're gonna buy American, that's kind of, you know, if you've already have your heart set on an American produced motorcycle, then you're going to go to Indian because that's the only other game in town. Now, if your tastes are a little bit more eclectic, then you might consider a Japanese cruiser. Um, and there are plenty out there to choose from. But the market is ever dwindling on these motorcycles. A lot of people who are older, the boomers are leaving this world. 
and the Gen Xers haven't quite caught up to the cruiser scene, or maybe they have, but so I think all in all, the reasons why we don't see any more large displacement, uh, big old cruising motorcycles is one, Harley Davidson won the market share. Um, in that critical time period where Harley Davidson was the only other game in town, as far as, or the domestic, only domestic game in town, rather, I should say, um, you know, people who were gonna own a Harley Davidson went ahead and bought a Harley Davidson. Two, the arrival of Indian on the scene offers a domestic alternative to uh, Harley Davidson. So a lot of people who have their heart set on buying American and they only buy American, um, that gave them an alternative to get away from Harley Davidson but stay with an American company. I guess the third thing is, is economy a little bit, right? So the younger generations, I know millennials have don't have a lot of disposable income and that's just kind of the way it is. A lot of them are, um, a lot of millennials don't want to get on motorcycles or for whatever reason. So, you know, it may be a combination of different things to do with the new generations coming up. So I think the combination of all those three things have kind of led Japanese manufacturers to say, you know what, the juice is not worth the squeeze on this. We'll go ahead and just cancel our lines. And that's really, um, I guess it's to the detriment of the rider, the fans of these types of motorcycles. Um, you know, Honda used to make a, one, a big displacement uh, V-twin. They no longer make the VTX. Uh, you've got Kawasaki had a number of other ones in their lineup. Um, and now they're just down to the Vaquero and the Voyager. Uh, and then, um, Yamaha is the same way. They used to have the Royal Star Venture, then they had the Royal Star, um, and then you know they discontinued all of it after, I guess, a reabsorbing Star Motorcycles back into their, uh, back into the parent company. But uh, yeah, they don't they don't make cruisers anymore. So, you know, there's a. Uh, it makes you wonder if the market is also dwindling, especially since Harley Davidson is posting bad sales numbers and other Japanese manufacturers are, are basically taking these bikes off the market. So it makes you wonder if the sales figures really are that atrocious for cruiser motorcycles out there, especially ones that are in the metric category. But I guess time will tell. Um, hopefully that this is the beginning of a new set of uh, models to be released, but I'm not gonna hold my breath on that. I think the more viable thing is to just patronize the big V-twin touring companies that we have left and do everything we can to encourage these companies to continue to make these products, that there are passionate fan bases for them, to give us more alternatives. And um, I guess the, the last thing I would say is if you're looking for a big V-twin cruiser and you don't want to spend a lot of money, or a cruiser or bagger, I guess I'm going to get cruiser or bagger, and you don't want to spend huge amounts of money, um, there are, there are, and you don't want to spend huge amounts of money, there are viable alternatives out there. Uh, check with some of the other companies, but like I said with Kawasaki, you got a couple good options right there. If you're looking at th something like a Road Glide or a Ultra Classic or anything like that. So just something to think about. But anyhow, those are just my two cents. It's kind of what I think about the whole situation. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next video.